five onwards, but I didn't start with playing the blues guitar a little bit later. And it was a really long process, you know, uh, going from um, not knowing anything on the guitar to having to work it all out. And I did it, took shortcuts, I didn't learn the right way, I didn't go to any teachers or anything like that. Later on, I bit the bullet because I started listening to a lot of the old time players from the 20s and 30s, some incredible guitarists like Wine Blake, and, uh, Mississippi John Hurt, and all those people. And I'm sure you've heard them if you're here. And uh, I wanted to learn because you, you hear this sort of two guitar type thing happening, you know. So I went along to a guy who had an ad in the paper saying he'd teach Wine Willie Johnson and Brian Blake and Robert Johnson and Charlie Patton and names all these great blues artists. And I thought, I have to, I don't believe this guy can possibly play all that stuff, you know. So I rang him up and he said, no, I can, I can play that stuff. And um, so I went along to him, his name was John Morris. I don't know if anyone's seen the Blues Preachers at all. There's a little du duo, they're very good, they're really professional. Uh, so I recommend them highly to you. If you get a chance, go on and see them. Um, they're really top notch. So anyway, he showed me the basics of the the, uh, the alternating bass and the, the monotonic bass styles, and that, they're the most important things about the style. Anyone plays country blues here? All? A bit, a bit. Yeah, it's your own version. Yes, sure, mate. Yeah. I'll move right through for you. Put all these things up here. Okay, so anyway, without further ado, I suppose we'll get into talking about ideal sort of guitars for, for playing this sort of stuff. Um, you want a wide neck, not, not wide like a classical, but nowhere near as thin as your modern type guitar. You really can't get the finger picking purchase on it. You want to be able to pick out individual strings without running into the other strings and getting unwanted sounds happening as much as possible. It's unavoidable to do some of it, you know, but... Um, so the other thing is having that wide gap between the strings helps. A, not a high action, but not a low action. So if anyone wants to see the, the action on this, you can see it's straight. This guitar is made by Gerard Gillet, he handmade this. And I highly recommend this, this brand. But you do have to spend a bit of money to get a good country blues guitar if you really want to get serious about it. So you can see it's not a, not sitting right down close like an electric guitar neck. You know, see what I mean? Yeah. Okay. It's the same with the high string. And as the banjo guy was saying, the most important thing is that you got a nice bass in, but you can really hear that top string coming out the top. Okay, all right. So um, my first lessons were in the key of G, and he taught me a couple of things. I like Mississippi John Hurt. Uh, the first thing was. Um, a little ditty, oh, you heard mama's got shortened bread. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll just play play what he showed me to do. So what the basics were there was this alternating bass. And I'm just going one, two, three, four, that quarter note pulse. Now on the bottom on the one and three beats, I'm just just a nice little thud. You've got to mute the thing, you've got to put your try to rest your 
palm of your hand on the on the bridge, just over in front of the bridge line. Rather than okay, when you get really used to that, you can. Which strings are you doing? Is that I'm just, that, that's the six and the four. So I'm playing the, um, the G on the bass, which is the root note, and the D, which is the fifth in the bass. So just D, G, D, G, D, that's the first basic one. So if we just want to practice getting that going. Okay, so that was a 6 4 pattern. The other one is the 6 4 5 4. Travis picking before Merle Travis came along. Yeah. Mm. These guys played like this in the 1920s and 10s. Presumably, since the guitar started, uh, the the rural players would play this sort of pattern. Okay. Um, and is there a difference between Travis picking and Clawhammer? Clawhammer's more of a, a banjo technique where. But they're more like playing individual strings. Now you'll do this in this sort of playing a lot. Another important thing I'd like to stress is that you're not playing a, a type of pattern picking. This is not like classical music where you will serve certain patterns you play. Everything you do depends on whatever the melody is and whatever you're trying to do. But the idea is that you get this thumb happens independently, so you're not even thinking about it. The thumb just does. So 
it's really hard if you're thinking a lot about what the thumb's doing. But once your thumb is automatic, and I don't know how long it can take, it depends on how much practice you do, rather than say it might take you two months to learn, but that's only if you practice a lot, practice every day. You know, I did two or three, four, five, six hours every day when I went to John Morris. I was so excited to learn this sort of music. And uh, it, the rewards are there as long as you practice, you know. It, it's about diligent practice. Um, so I just wanted to get into now, you know, showing you what the automating bass will do in the different keys. Now the most important chords, three chords, what do you think they are? Anyone know? G, C, and D. Yeah, G, C and D, in other words, the one, four, four and five. And five. Yeah. yeah. One, four, and five. And in blues, there's a lot of dominant sevens. So like a, a, a G7. You would have been taught to play a G7 that way. So all you've got to do now is just, if you play the other way, is to, pivoting from the, the index finger to the little finger. And then the little finger does a little dance. So what we might be doing is um, playing triplets and play an eighth nut. So there's a lot to do and uh, I suggest um, using tablature to anyone not know how to use tablature? basic tablature at all. You know that the tablature is written down showing you what string to hit, what fret to fret. Uh, it doesn't give you the whole story but if you write it out properly you can write out the stems and you can see the triplets and you can see the eighth notes. The other important thing about blues is that um, it's not all in straight time, a lot of it's in what we call swing time which was invented apparently by Louis Armstrong. And the shuffle, the typical shuffle that we all hear, is in triplet time, in swing time. It's using a triplet, but you're leave, leaving out the end. One and a. You say you're going to one, up, up, two, up. You get that rhythm. So, um, so the, I'll get into that in a minute. So just go through the one, four, and five chords in the major keys. So we've got the two. Four is C. So I did a D and a D7. A D7 sounds a bit bluesier. And anyone see something different there? I'm playing with the thumb, I'm playing the, the F sharp and the bass getting that over. You can also play it. It depends on the moment and what you what you where your hands are before and where they're going going after. So sometimes you'll play with a thumb. We're still going six four. On the C
takes a bit of work getting the thumb over there, over the G. Why can't you use the bar chord? You, you can use the bar chord if oh, you're only going to be comping. But there's something weak about the bar chord, there's more strength in here. You can hear the difference. See what I'm saying? So there's a, there's a weakness to that chord a little bit. I tend to use bar chord bar only two or three strings at a time. So if I'm playing chord with the F and the bass as well, I'll play an F minor and hammer on. And it's pretty hard to get that top note sometimes because just your other fingers in the way to get the, the flesh will just touch the string then, notice that. So I, I suggest you try to play these chords like that if you can. Now you might have um, joint troubles and then if, if that's the case then you just have to go with what you can do. So if you can only play a bar chord, you play a bar chord. But in that case I would just suggest you play down here. Unless the arrangement calls for you playing here. So I'm just showing you different ways we can play the G chord. Um, you can play it. Cheap for you, which we you just use at the bar, those two. Yeah. And there. But it sounds. Okay, there was a guy called William Brown who used to play a thing. And there's this C chord, which I play a lot, C7. That's one of your seventh shape. Now basically it's, it's just this seven here, but we move these two string fingers down to here, to the first and the third string. playing blues too that you learn all the seventh chords. Um, I'll wait till we get to the key of E before we go to that. So what I might do is go to E now. So we're going to use the same intervals. One, four, five. Anyone know why they're called that? Or don't want to know why they're called that? I know You know what? You know why? Yeah. If you've got to know your C major, your major scale, that's the most important thing. There you go, buddy. You must know your major scale in any music. I don't care what style of music, mate. You must know your major scale. You must know the intervals that makes it up. Okay, so it's tone, 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 semitone, tone, tone, semitone. Back to your one, back to your octave. Um, so if we're playing G major scale, we give a number to each one of those notes instead of going 
G, A, B, C, D, and so forth. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So this scale is where your chords are built upon. So you'll hear people go two, five, one in jazz terms, or three, six, two, five, one. They'll be just going which uh, degree of that scale you're on. Um, so that's where we get the, the, the name from. So once you know that, then you can work out whatever key you're in, you can find your one, four, five chords. So um, in country blues too, we, we don't use all 12 keys. We only worried about keys where we can play open strings as much as possible. It frees you up. Um, and it sounds, sounds more, it's old timey sort of music. But uh, the more you've got those strings that open up, the better they sound. Okay, if everything's in closed position, you don't really have that freedom of the melody. So it, you'll hear blues run. <laughs> Way, rather than playing everything like a rock player would play, going horizontally, you'll be going um, laterally here, so using the whole neck. So, using those same chords, now we go to the E chord and the key of E. Anyone know the chords? Yeah, yeah, and B7. One thing I see a lot of guys playing on the coast, they're playing blues, if, whether it be, no matter what style of blues. If we're playing an E, when we go to that five chord, we don't want to hear this. That's not a turnaround chord at all. That, that is not part of blues, okay? It's a big no-no. I saw a guy playing it last night, and I feel like cringing every time, but I just keep my mouth shut at the time, but you don't do that. It's a B7, you can play that, you can finish on that chord. So that's your five chords of B7, but this one's a Anyone not know that B7 shape? Well, you all do. Okay, so if we're playing the same thing, we're using the same sort of pattern. fingers will get sore playing this, as I'm sure you've already found out, playing bare things. And that's why I brought some finger picks along and some things I wanted to show you later on. But uh, you'll see a good blues man's pack is you've got to have your slide. Okay, Pope. And a thumb and two finger picks for not in my case. Uh, if you want to just pick, pick with one finger, that's fine. You'll see a lot of the blues players uh, on the old films in the 60s, though, just using the thumb and the index finger. Gary Davis, for instance, Reverend Gary Davis, an incredible guitar player, would just be using those two there. And you could have a thumb pick, and I'm pretty sure he had a finger pick. Is that right? Anyone know, seen those films of him? Oh, I recommend you go and see them on, on YouTube. Just put in Reverend Gary Davis, the Rev. Uh, we'll go try to play some of his a bit later on. 
Um, so that's that, that's the key of E. We can go in now for the key of A. So that's the five chord. I'm going through the one, four, and five chords in the, di in the different keys. Um, in the main keys that you'll be playing in. Uh, so I did this one here. This is based on the A shape chord, but it's played the D shape chord up there. But I'm just playing. So if I play the. got a D chord there. Okay? Or you can play here. But that's a bar chord, it's, we don't generally play that in blues, but we'll play the top half of the, the, the D chord. Keys are pretty tough to play a ragtime blues thing in. Um, so that, they're the basic chords there. I'll go into more chords in a little while, but I want to go into now the, the more delta type style, the Texas style of the old country blues, and that was with the monotonic bass where we're just thumbing. Got a nice pulse there and it's on that. Now the beauty of this style is we can play anywhere and we're free. Yeah. Okay. 
triplets really come into their own in this sort of style. A good little practice thing to get, get a real good pulse going and a real good feel about it is using the triplets on the top at the beginning and with a straight bass. So we're just doing that for two bars. Okay, and we're playing a triplet on here, just this little part of the E7 chord. Swap that over to play the, the, the triplet feel on the bass and the, the, the quarter notes on the top so we have this sort of sound. I'm not playing the triplets on the bass, I'm just the triplet feel, which is what the shuffle comes from. So you know, triplets up here, we also got that shuffle feel. Then you'd have no turnaround. So. You hear that sort of a phrase which would signal the end of the, the progression and you starting again after that. So. We're back into the beginning. So it's important to be able to do that too. So in all the keys we can do the same thing. Um, going on to the key of A, we'll do the same thing. So we generally don't do a lot of uh, Big Bill Bruins you would play in C. song in the city, uh, Down the Dirt Road Blues, which I meant to play yesterday. 
Uh, but the main one would be you're playing in A. So you've heard Robert Johnson's. Uh, Is that monotonic bass? What chord is that? Shape that's an A, that's part of an A7. That's the top three in A7. Yeah, it's a D7 taken up. But if you want to play the full, you've got to have the root note in there. But we don't worry about that because we're already playing the root note down the bottom.
Monday. Exactly like they were played back in the day. Um, so the big road blues I play, which we have this pattern where the, the, the walking from the D to the. But there's a rhythmic little thing happening on that song, whereas. Time to teach you the song. 
songs that he's going to walk out with a bunch of songs. <laughs> but um, this one, this will go on YouTube. Maybe. So yeah, I'll put it on YouTube <laughs> online. Greg's got There's a. There's another song I want to go into. Greg's got a site called Blue Slander. It's all one word on Facebook. Yes. So he's good does good quite a few lessons one. on there, and that he's done in. It yeah, it's very good. so and then he's also um, got a few other YouTube videos if you go into that. And I filmed them all, so there's about maybe 70 there now. Yes. Um, there's a great song by Bo Carter. Anyone familiar with Bo Carter? You've got to check Bo Carter out. So these are names. If you don't know Bo Carter, check him out. It's B O Carter. It wasn't his real name, it was an alias. His real name was, he was one of the Chapmans. There's a great big family called the Chapman family. Sam Chapman, Bo Chapman, and um, about four. Charlie Patton was apparently a Chapman, and Big Bill Brooms he was, and so was Memphis Slim. They, they were all part of this big, one big family, a very talented family, or clan, I should say, second cousins and cousins there. But, and Washboard Sam was an alien. So he he had this song where Now instead of playing a D there, he had this really cool trick. This part of this D7 that I showed you before, but he'll just play the top three here. He'd leave his little finger free, so he He'd be playing this note, A with the third, then the D, and then on the fourth fret, third string, second thing, and then we'd Then he'd play a little triplet in there, this is the tricky bit. He'd have a triplet in here with a little finger. Finger picker for sure, there's never been a greater finger picker than Blake. Uh, Merle Travis, you mentioned before, would have definitely picked up off Blake. We would have heard him, it's, it's obvious in his playing. All Merle did was using the same techniques and then adding more modern top sorts of chords over that, the chords that were around in the late 30s and 40s. Uh, it's still the same right hand, it's, it's all in the right hand, this music, you know, the feel. So Blind Blake had Chump Man Blues and another one which is a bit hard to play so I'm going to leave it alone. But Chump Man Blue, he had this space pattern where he'd go one and three, four, one and. So he'd leave out the second beat on the bass, so he'd go one and. So it would sound like. So this is, I'm just showing 
me some advanced stuff. Is if I'm going too far for you, just say it. If there's anything you want me to go back over, so that you can take something away from it, Where just stop me and, and make me know. Where you mentioned uh, uh, Texas blues. So what's the style change with Texas? Texas blues is a monotonic bass style in general. Um, I'll touch on that in a minute when I go back to standard because Tom Blyman and Jefferson was the first great Texas blues band, but he doesn't sound anything like Lightning Hopkins. Um, and there's a lot of other guys, but they, they would use the freeness of the neck with that monotonic bass to walk around. So I'll drop out and go back to standard tuning. Just to demonstrate. T-Bone Walker was another one. I mean, you can't get three more wildly different guitar players, but the, diff the thing is they all had in common was that T-Bone Walker and Blyton and Hopkins used to carry Blyton and Jefferson's guitar around for him because, and they used to guide him around the streets. Mm. And they used to say, um, you, whatever you do, you don't call him blind because he'd he, he, he love to throw punches. He was a pretty violent sort of look. Blind man. So was Blind Blake, they, they, they love to get in punch ups apparently. But they were big, huge bears of men, so it only takes one shot. Like, and they would be grabbing hold of the guys and they, they were brawlers. But apparently the blind men used to fight a lot. Figure. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, are you going to show the slide too? No, because um, Greg Bowles is here, he's going to show some slide. Um, so Blind Lemon Jefferson, uh, one of the songs I learned of his was this one. songs. One's called Black Horse Blues, which I'll, I'll, I'll run through. I'll 
so you can't remember it. Now, you have to... Sing over this way. Come on, fishing, fishing with you. I'm going fishing too. I'm going fishing and you get good bites. There's a little, uh, there's a little bit where I'd like to. There's a little something that I'd like to relate. want to cover it just a little bit. Um, we would use the advanced chord progressions in this one. So in the key of C, we'd go to a 1 to a 3 chord, which would be an E7. And in standard music, I just want to touch on blues theory just for a second. In standard music, the third chord would be a minor chord, wouldn't it? Yeah. And the second and the sixth would be minor. But what happened in ragtime that came along in the 1890s was, and, and in early jazz and, and in blues in particular, I think it comes from blues, because blues was around when ragtime was being done, but uh, I'm not sure what form it had, uh, because there's no recordings of it. But what they did was substitute chord substitutions, and they would substitute all the minor chords with dominant sevens. So instead of going from a... old style, you know, if you want to. Sort of thing, we're getting sort of medieval there. You replace that with a seventh chord and you hear the difference. So, so we're substituting all those chords with the sevens, and suddenly we've got a completely different ball game and that's what happened in the around about the turn of the century was this blues changed music forever and we have modern, that's why they say we have modern music from the blues. So Brian Blake's typical style, they play a ragtime like this. bits in them, they're complex and as hell, so, um, okay, well now I wanted to go into some different tunings, 
um, the one, main one would be open D, so if we go back to the drop D tuning, we also make the, the, both D strings D, so we'll drop that down. Okay, because we're in D, we need an F sharp as well as an A. So we've got, we've got the A, so we need an A on the B string as well. So I'm going to, we get run out of time, aren't we? Well, it's uh, 10 past 3. Okay, so. Sorry about that, I didn't know. Who's doing, Greg's doing the next one. Are you guys doing a workshop? No, uh, Greg Paul. Okay. And now we need an F sharp, so we've got to, we take this fourth string on the D string and we drop it down to there with an F sharp note. Slides here. I hope you've got your slides. 
Okay, I'd like to introduce Mr. Greg Bowles all the way from West Australia for us all. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Greg Bowles and I'll get you to ask some questions later on. Um,